We got entertainment for the whole family. You're hot. Oh, I love it. All right, if you are a, a hockey fan, then you know who Matt Rempe is. But if you're not, you're going to want to know who he is. This kid is a rookie who's only been up in the league for 10, 12 days. He's 6'7", 241 pounds, and he fights. Yeah, He fights a lot, and you heard a bunch of it right there. And I thought, hey, we have nothing to talk about the Yotes today. So we figured we'll bring on Steve Peters and talk about this phenom in New York for the Rangers. And Steve joins us now. Steve, who is? Tell us more about this Matt Rempe. Who is? Where did he come you know, from? I, I tell you what, this kid. First of all, can you hear me? Because I know Chris. Oh yeah, no, you sound loud. Clear. It's about Jeez. damn time. Wow, yeah. you're in the studio with us. Chris is panicking behind the scenes. <laughs> Matt Rempe, I tell you what, they are so excited for this kid in in New York. He's 21 years old. He's played in just six <laughs> National Hockey League games. And and here's the 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 most interesting stat about Matt Rempe. He's played 27 minutes. On the ice, 27 minutes on the ice, and he has 32 penalty minutes. <laughs> so he spends more time in the box than he does on the ice. And this kid, he's excited to be there. He gets it. He understands his role. He picks his fights and warm-ups. And <laughs> in three of his four games, he fought one fight 13 seconds into his game. Yeah, he's fighting. And you heard the one against Martin. Didn't even start the game. <laughs> like this is old-time hockey. The way and, and people say, oh, they don't like fighting hockey. We don't like fight. Well, yeah, tune in. Tune in and see if you don't like fighting because people are on their feet to see Matt Rempe. Now, the, the big thing about Matt Rempe, and you talk about all his fights, is when you get a player like this, he needs a nickname. Like, yeah. I, I'm waiting for, like, the monster of Midtown, the beast of Broadway, the garden giant. There like, you he go. Needs something. He's six foot eight. Yeah. It, this isn't basketball. Yeah. This is hockey. Yeah. yeah, excited about Matt Rempe. Okay, Who, so so are, are are they going back to goonism again in the NHL like they had the when everybody goons. say oh, old-time hockey and everybody had a goon? I, I tell you what, the, the goons that are still still around in the league, and there are very, very, very few of them, they're really happy this kid is there because now they're <laughs> relevant again. And, and right when you thought fighting was out of the game, here comes Matt Rempe. I, I think the kid can play, but we haven't had a chance to see it yet because as soon as he gets on the ice, somebody wants to fight him. And, and that, that's a problem for the poor kid. You look at him, he looks beat up already. <laughs> He doesn't get a chance to play because the tough guy on, on the other team always wants to fight. But I tell you what, the Rangers are hot. Who do you who do you compare him to? Like I think of Chris Pronger right, right away. Is he an Arizona Coyote? Are they still paying him. Is it Chris yeah, Pronger? I, I think he'll, he'll retire to a, a Coyote. But <laughs> Pronger was a was Bobby a, was a Hall of Fame way of life, type. man. Yeah, he, he was a Hall of Fame player. Matt Rempe, unfortunately, probably will not be a Hall of <laughs> yeah, Hall of Fame. Um, but you know, Probert, more like Probert in Detroit. Okay. How, how about Stu Grimson, the the Grim Reaper? Yes. Rupert. The Grim Reaper. See, when you're tough like that, you need that nickname, like the Grim Reaper. Yeah. That was just scary. I, he's more akin to that. It's just, it's just, and, and the most exciting thing about this kid, if you get an opportunity to see him or, or go click on one of his interviews, he honestly is sincerely excited about the NHL experience. He's not that, oh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm in the NHL and I should be here. No, it's, man, I'm taking it all in. This is awesome. This is great. Like he's like a little kid, and it's a breath of fresh air. And the game really needs something like that right now. Does um was he a a a goon in uh, in minor league hockey as well? I mean, did he was this expected that he was going to get called up and he was going to be a banger? Yeah, you know, he didn't as much in juniors when he was really young, but in the American League again, it's it's when you're six foot eight, two forty, like you better be able to fight because somebody's <laughs> coming at you. So yeah, he did have to fight a lot for the Hartford Wolfpack in the in the American League as well. Jeez! All right, let's talk about this other team that should be sure? in, that should be in that same league. <laughs> do we have uh, the Yotes? All right, I'm calling it. We do underdog picks today, and I'm taking the Yotes tonight because I think it's a it's a revenge game. You know, they lost the other Heard day. A bar. That's a good choice. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, but Austin Matthews, he hasn't scored in two games, so maybe maybe he's not as good as we think he is. I mean, he hasn't scored two games, so uh, this could be a night for the Yotes to kind of break this 13 game losing streak. No, okay. Maybe. The, the, this Toronto Maple Leaf team is hot. Yeah, it, we'll say that for one. And the Coyotes are not. They've lost thirteen in a row. But I, I, I just threw out a really. It's a. It's an obscure fact, and, and I'm going with it. Um, and it came from our producer of our show, Sean DePaz, and he wants credit because I All never right. give him credit. Um, Matthew Nyes, Maddie Nyes is is a star forward for the Toronto Maple Leafs. He was born in Arizona on October seventeenth, two thousand and two. You got that? October 17th, 2002. The last time the Toronto Maple Leafs beat the Arizona Coyotes in Toronto in regulation, October 17th, 2002. They have not beat Arizona in regulation in Toronto in 22 
years. Wow. So the the day that Maddie Nyes was born, and Maddie Nyes will be in the lineup tonight for Toronto. Jack. So either he extends a curse or breaks it. Uh, well, Jax and Chris, why don't you guys bring us that kind of stuff? I mean, we, we <laughs> don't have great nugget. We don't get that kind of stuff, man. That's, a, that's, a great that's good. But um, is there light at the end of the tunnel? I mean, are you seeing no. it? No, okay. no, no. That was wow. Yeah, that was a fast interview. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for showing hey, up. Hey, uh, yeah. See you later, buddy. Thanks for <laughs> thanks the time. Get, hey, Steve, let us down get, easier, would you please? Yeah. I know. Hate to get depressing, but Clayton Keller, the leading scorer, is out of the lineup again for the second straight game. He's not going to play tomorrow in Ottawa, so that'll be three straight without their leading score. Three. You look at a team that's really suffering, and guess what's right around the corner? The trade deadline. So not only is this this roster already struggling, why don't you get rid of three or four players and then see how you compete? I think this is going to be a really tough end to the 23-24 season, but as I always like to do, throw out that silver lining, the good news is this gets them a better position in the draft than they had even last season. Um, so as difficult as this will be down the stretch, there were moments of brightness in the beginning. There was playoff positioning up until January, and now just let it go. Turn on baseball, watch the Diamondbacks, <laughs> and just let this team pick really, really high in the draft. All right, Steve, where, did, where in your estimation did it go wrong? Because you just referenced they were hovering right around being in the in the hunt to make a playoff spot. And then you said in January, poof, it was like, uh oh, what? Somebody opened a door. Everybody left. What happened? Yeah, they're two losses away from the longest losing streak since turn, coming to the Valley in 96, 97. So this is horrific losing streak they're in right now. And, and I, I, you talk to the guys in the room and the coaching staff, and, and you get varied answers. But right now, the one that seemed to set off this losing streak was two. the rumor of relocation. And when the, the Ryan Smith ownership group out of Salt Lake City said, hey, we're ready for a hockey team. The building's ready. We can take a team tomorrow. They have not won a game since that press release. And, and I know that's an excuse, but it did start the ball rolling. Now you can look at they didn't get the same goal tending. You look at guys worried about the trade deadline. You can look at injuries. But I do think the start of it really was the dark cloud of the relocation rumors. And, and they've just been unable to find their way out. And now they look around the room waiting just to see how we're going to lose tonight. Even when they get leads, they go, you know what's coming. Like the shoe's going to drop it and we're going to lose again. So I, I, I'm I'm concerned. I'm concerned that they might not get a win on this five-game trip. Steve, is that direct correlation why they're, they're starting so slow, why they start so slow, or, or they give up toward the end? I mean, does that go hand in hand, the slow start, then they kind of pick up steam? You know, I, I don't even think it's it's with that. It, it's, again, it's them looking around the room waiting to lose. And, and it's it's we went through this with Rick Tockett back back in 2020 that or, or excuse me, 2017, where he lost 11 straight to start the year. You just that team was at three to one in Philadelphia with a minute to go. And they they don't win that game like that. That's hard to do when you're you just waited to lose. And I think this team, if they get a good start, expect a bad finish. If they get a bad start. They're, they'll they'll be behind before the game's 10 minutes old. I, I, I just think they're really struggling to find their way out. All right, Steve, as the uh, sheriff of the neighborhood watch, I had an issue today that I need to address with you. And if those just joining us, Steve and I are neighbors. We live next door to each other. And he brought in my, my, uh, my uh, trash can today, which was very nice of him. So I'm pulling out, Steve, pulling out. The guy across the street comes walking over, new to the neighborhood, and, uh, and says, uh, hey, uh, that light is is facing my house and it's blinding me. And when I say light, you know, landscaping lights that yeah. kind of go towards your house and your trees. Yes. And this is and it's it was turned around facing his house across the street. So I said, well, all right, I'll so I get out of my car and I moved it. I'm like, I'm sorry. He goes, well, maybe the landscaper, you know, did that. But uh, yeah, it was right in my eye. I mean, how do I address that? I mean, I don't know what I, I've never been in that situation. <laughs> Counselor well, Steve well, Peters. <laughs> first of all, we we've got our eye on this guy. Okay, so don't worry because we're, 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 we're concerned. There's been a, there's been a lot of cars coming in and out of that driveway. I know still, he's got like six he, of them in there. Yep. Some of those old, old, old cars that he's either refurbishing yeah. or he's doing some auto mechanic work, and that is not allowed in the HOA. Ooh. So we're just waiting for him to step out of line. Okay. Grant, granted, he could have turned the light. Like that's I what I said. I said. I said, why don't the you light? Just, I asked. I said, hey, we're neighbors. You could have just turned the light around. I mean, how would I know it's not facing my house unless it's not something you look at when you pull in. Oh, no. all ten of my lights are going at my house. <laughs> it's like, yeah, geez, I'm concerned. Should I? I wait, so wait. I shouldn't fire my landscaper because of it. I'm okay. No, but right. I tell you what, Dave and I, Dave, the, yeah. the, the cop on the corner, and sure. I will, we will keep, this guy lives right between us. The yeah. guy in question, we are going to keep a very close. <laughs> I, I have actually alerted everyone by text this morning. Good, thank you. 
Keep right. your eyes Did open. you already vet this guy, Steve? Wow, look at you. Way I'm concerned. That's why he's the sheriff. Yeah, we, he is the sheriff, yeah, man. So. Steve, good stuff, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Yeah, Steve thanks, Peters. guys. Appreciate it. You guys, Steve Peters, you can check him out uh, on his Twitter page at S. Peters Hockey, or more importantly, at PHNX Sports. So check him out there. Uh, Football 50 is next, says the NFLPA released report. 